what's fascinating is how this particular religion became so how it grew and how it became it, it stuck through stayed through time we still have it to this day it's one of the most powerful religions in the united states as far as I, mean, I don't remember. I think I saw somewhere that the church has how many billions of dollars? I can't remember what it is, but it's a very, very powerful organization in the United States and in the world. And I just find it really interesting how this particular religion stuck and and managed to garner as many following uh, followers as it did over time. And uh, I don't know, maybe, uh, do you have any thoughts as to why that would be? I'm just curious. This question just came up. But, I mean, what is your theory on why this church I, has been around so long? I'm so, no. No, uh, it didn't make it interrupt. <laughs> you're good. I'm just talking uh, very slowly. <laughs> uh, I, uh, I think um, the church would never have been as successful as it was if Brigham Young hadn't taken over. I think Brigham Young was incredibly determined. I think he was really organized. He did not accept any dissension. There there were a lot of um, uh, people who were in the church disagreeing with Joseph Smith, uh, in, you know, over various things, uh, in particular polygamy. And so there, there were dissenters and, you know, when, when, uh, Joseph Smith was, uh, murdered, the church split and, um, there were different, um, parts of it. Brigham Young brought everybody together. He took them, they, they had, they had the shared history. They, they worked their way across the United States to settle in the Great Basin, not an easy place to settle. They, he would not tolerate anybody disagreeing with him. Um, and, and there probably was, a, I don't know if you're familiar with the Danites. They, they came out of Missouri, but, but there was a, there was a group of, of vigilantes that were in the Mormon church that would correct other Mormons if they in some way disagreed with, with the prophet at that point, Joseph Smith. But, but there was this, there was this, uh, um, culture of, of, um, Dan Knight, you know, we won't tolerate you disagreeing with our prophet. And so they became so cohesive. Um, they also had a common enemy, which was the United States. Uh, they had a, a, um, a, a vendetta. Uh, they wanted to avenge the blood of the prophet which was Joseph Smith and his murder at the Carthage jail. And you just had a, you had a culture come together, get very determined. And then you had the missionizing, always missionizing, always bringing people in. And what, what Joseph Smith promised um, and what Brigham Young promised was, you know, you, you're going to come into co a community. These, the, a lot of them were outside of the United States. You know, they were promised these, just like so many immigrants, they were promised this, a promised land. Um, and, you know, they end up in the Great Basin and there were many people who were extremely disappointed. They didn't have any money, um, but the church took care of everybody and and um, they they grew their numbers. And I, I just think the circumstances, the history, the, the early church oppression and this incredibly determined uh, prophet really cemented the church and they they went from being very very poor in a country that's pretty lean and hard to to you know make the desert bloom as as uh, the, the people are always talking about the the mormon people they did and they they prospered and they each generation got a little bit better you know the first generation that got there had to deal with the locusts and they had to deal with flooding and they had to deal with any number of of awful uh circumstances but they but they continued to work together they were they were very connected they they weren't integrated into um outside i mean the the mormon people stayed with other mormon people and the church was very protective of that. Um, even in some of these early efforts, I, I, I write about in my dissertation, my, my book, American Zion, came out of my dissertation because I, I started looking at Mormon settlement. And one of the things that, that happened, for example, was um, in Zion National Park, there was an Easter pageant uh, that happened in the 30s. And it was wildly popular, both with the local people as well as with people from the United States who would come to Zion National Park and celebrate Easter all together. Well, the church put the kibosh on that because they did not want Mormon people being influenced by non-Mormon people, even though everybody was Christian. And so, so there was a real, um, 
there was there was a real effort to protect that culture and then they became prosperous and as i think you're referring to there was a recent article oh gosh it might have come out right in december 2019 that the mormon church had been able to um I, I mean, again, this is a, a nonprofit. This is a church, uh, but uh, but they had they had um, accumulated a hundred billion dollars in investments, and that was just one piece of their portfolio. <laughs> yeah. So this is an incredibly wealthy, incredibly successful uh, um, faith, and um, and it, and it you know again it gets back to some of the things that we talked about before. Why haven't the Bundys been excommunicated? Um, who in the Mormon Church, uh, who's powerful, uh, still believes that their fight on the ground is important? And I, I think that we've seen Utah be one of the leaders in the state's rights efforts. Uh, that they are that there are politicians in the state of Utah who are also members of the Mormon Church who are resentful that public lands in Utah. And I can't remember the percentage of public lands in Utah, but I want to say it's about 60%. In some counties, it's 90%. I mean, I, I think Garfield County, uh, which is where Escalante um, or the Grand Staircase Escalante National Monument is, I think that might be up to 97% public land in that area. But because you have this notion of Zion and because you have this notion of a culture that wants to do things without the, the interference of the American government, you have a very deep culture of pushing back against against federal control, especially over lands that you view historically as your own.